Bonjour! In this episode, we recreate the poster of Ratatouille from Walt Disney. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to episode 77 of my Photography Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm again a French photographer, still living in Paris. I'm still on travel, but I'm still French, but this is still in English. All right. In last episode, I showed you some critiques of photography, of sunsets, and a few suggestions that I could give on some of the photos. If you didn't get a chance to check out the episode, I had some good review on it. This week, I'm going to show you the story behind this photo. This photo was inspired by the movie Ratatouille from Walt Disney Pixar. And um, you will see there's all kind of little tricks about that photo because it was shot by hand, no tripod, on the top of Notre Dame during a sunset, which is quite tricky because it was very dark. Anyways, here is the whole story. All right, guys, just before we get started, this is Thanksgiving. And as you know, this week I'm giving the biggest discount ever, 40% and you get the turkey. All you have to do is uh, go on my training and put in the discount code THANKSGIVING and you will get minus 40% on anything. All right, so this week's tutorial is basically uh, some tips and tricks and a story behind a photo. You probably all saw the movie called Ratatouille. It's a Disney Pixar movie. And um, let me show you on Lightroom. This is the, the original movie poster that we have in Paris for that movie. I thought it was an amazing poster. Uh, it's a painting of Paris, and you know how crazy I am about Paris. And um, and so I, I decided to, to find out where they shot this. Of course, this is a drawing, but it is inspired by a true photo. And what this is inspired from is uh, the view that you have from Notre Dame. Notre Dame is one of the oldest cathedral in Paris. It's a beautiful, this is what you see here. And you have uh, 200 stairs or something. You can climb up here and... When you, once you're there, this is the view that you have. This is the view of Paris. It's very similar to the Ratatouille poster. This is really where it got inspired from. There is only one problem. And the problem is that tripods are not allowed, but really not. Why? Because it's very narrow when you're up there and there is a lot of tourists and you have like two, three minutes to do what you have to do. And then you go out and you just have a queue behind you of tourists which are pushing you and there is not even the, the space to put a tripod down. But I really wanted to get this Ratatouille shot. So what I did, and this is the trick, and this is a pretty uh, interesting trick. If I press I on this photo, you will see that it's um, it was shot at 0 0.8 of a second at 4.5 with an ISO 640. So, I mean, 1.8 is still very slow and I could not do it by hand. And what I did is, there was a little rock and I just put my camera on a rock and I put my aperture at 4.5, which was almost the maximum I could open because I was shooting this with a 1740. So I opened it. I could have opened to four actually, uh, but I opened to 4.5. Now, this is a little trick. Uh, when you open up to four and you're pretty wide, you are going to get still a very depth of field, a very big depth of field. I mean, look how sharp the photo is. You know, it's sharp here and it's almost sharp the whole way down to uh, through Paris. So that's kind of cool. And um, basically what I did is um, I was trying to not go too high into the ISO because this is something I wanted to use for print. I really wanted to use it for print. So I figured that I could hold on for one second on a stone. And uh, so uh, I put in, uh, I opened up my aperture and then I put in like one second or 0.8 second. I took the shot. It was too dark. So I went up 200 ISO, 400 ISO, and finally 640 ISO. And you know how I like to have my photos a bit underexposed because this was like a, a sunset scene. So that's the raw file, which, by the way, you can get for free. I know it's crazy. It's one of my best shots ever. You can get for free if you sign up to my newsletter. Uh, anyways... All that instruction on the description of the video or, or at the end of this video. Anyway, so uh, the trick is this. What I did is I put my camera on timer two seconds and uh, I hold on to that stone and I press the shutter. And so this is a shot that I got. I took quite some shot, but that's the best that I got. That's the, the more Ratatouille one. Now I want to show you, that's my first trick. So it is possible to shoot in the night. I mean, it's not exactly the night, it's sunset 
without a tripod, but you have to find a stone and uh, don't get your, uh, you have to work out so that your time is not longer than one second. It's very, very hard. I mean, unless it's a very, you know, uh, straight stone flat, you know, you can just put your camera on, but that was not the case. I was like a, it was like a rounded stone, but I, I managed to get the, sh the, the, the Photoshop, but it's very important that you use a timer so that a two second timer so that when the photo is taken, you're not touching the shutter because when you touch the shutter, you are usually moving the camera. Okay. So that's how I took the shot. So let's do, uh, my standard retouching, which you know by now, but there's a little trick here. Uh, open up the shadows. Ooh, I'm always amazed with the quantity of hidden information in a raw file. Okay. Bring down the highlights. All right. And now uh, I'm going to do the whites and the blacks. So the whites, I'm holding on the Alt key, going to the right. And I see some lights. That's about fine. And now on the reverse, I'm going to go a lot more on this one. Okay. Now the key thing on this one is going to be, uh, I want to show you something about depths of colors. Uh, this photo, I want to, I want to, um, I want to give it more depth and, um, I want to show you something. I found a website, which is amazing. It's called, uh, seven design.com and they created, they have a blog and they created this article, which I find is amazing. It's called creating depths in art and photography. You will get the link of that blog, uh, under the description of the video. And basically it says you have different ways you can create depths in a photo or in a drawing. The first one is depths by atmosphere. Uh, you know how this is very foggy and this is very clear that creates depths, you know, same thing here. Look at this beautiful drawing. All the mans here are very, very clear. And the back is very, very, uh, fuzzy foggy, you know, so that creates depths. This is even more, uh, visible, you know, the, the, here, this is very, very neat. And as you go away, uh, so anyways, you know, so atmosphere can create depth, same thing here, same thing here and same thing here. You know, it's very, it's a bit blurry at the back and very clear there. Now, this is where we're interested. Depths by color. This is interesting. This is the perception of depths created by color. Warm colors appear closer to the viewer while cool colors appear farther. So this is, and the opposite is true against a white background. So this is on the left is for night photos and on the right, it's for daylight photo. So let's look on the left. Uh, we have a dark scene and basically what they are saying is that if you put anything warm uh, towards you and anything uh, cold far away from you, it's going to help create depths. And that's what I want to do with that photo. Now, if it was a daylight photo, it's reverse. I would have anything which is uh, blue, very close to me, very, uh, and anything warm, very uh, far away. And let's see some examples. Check this out from, um, from, from this Disney movie. Uh, so you see the, the panda and the monkey and the tiger is very colorful, very warm. And in the back, you've got the mountain is very blue. So it creates depths. Okay. This one is also, do you have, um, you know, uh, you, and they put the table here. You can see this is, a uh, yeah, warm first and, uh, uh, and cold on the back. This is very obvious. This is very warm and this is very cold, right? And look, the famous red tattoo poster, what are we trying to do? It's warm here and look at the sky, the sky is blue, right? So you get the point, you know, this is warm and the, the back, uh, so yeah, that's how we create depths. Now on this photo, this is blue. This is reverse. You know, we have this, which is very blue and this, which is very warm. So it's reversed. So how to get some warm stuff more in the front and some cold stuff in the back. First, I'm going to change the white balance to shade. Uh, shade is going to make everything warmer. So that's cool. Now we're very happy. So I'm add, I'm going to add a bit of contrast. So we have a very contrasty photo, maybe a bit of clarity. All right. And, uh, even more vibrance, you know, I'm crazy about vibrance. I mean, this is how really how it looked. It was an amazing sunset and Paris by night. When you see it from the Notre Dame, it's just breathtaking. Oh, one thing also, this view from Notre Dame is very special. It's called the seven bridge view because it's the only spot in Paris where you can see the Seine river with seven bridges. And there's a very, very famous photo from Duano called the seven bridge photo where he shot it a bit like this. And I was actually trying to mimic that also. 
anyway, so now this is not anymore so much warm. This is, I mean, there's a lot of warm there. This, this was blue, now it's a bit warmer. But this should be cold because this is far away. So, well, let's just do a simple filter here. Let me press the Alt key to reset everything. So I'm going to put a filter here on the background. And I'm going to add, I'm going to lower a bit the exposure to get some more details, especially in the highlights. I'm going to get the highlights a bit down and I'm going to add some blue, some serious blue in the photo. Okay, and I'm actually going to do it further down. And now I have a lot of blue there. Uh, I, can, I can even add a new one make it on top, blue again, darker again, not so much, yeah, something like that, and this one I'm just going to lift up a little bit, so that we really have some blues there, something like that, yeah, check it out, before the graduate filter, after, we totally added blue, on, okay, maybe it's a bit much on this one, yeah, it's a bit much on this one. Okay, I added blue in the background. I still have some red there, but at least I have some blue. And I added blue also here. And I can go the reverse here. I can add a filter here. And on the opposite, I can, well, I can lower the exposure to close the photo, but I can go warmer. I can make it shiny, a bit, a, a bit warmer. So this, so it gives further depth to the photo. Check it out before. This is all, there is no depth, it's very flat. And now with this, it, there is more depth to it. And it's really, you know, uh, doing exactly what they've been doing in this drawing. You know, it's warm here and it's blue there, you know, it's... And I think it's a very interesting technique to give depth to your photo. Okay, now this one must have a lot of noise. You see, it's very grainy because it was shot at 640. So let's take care of that before we say it's a retouch photo. Uh, so the noise, I'm going to put the noise reduction... On this one, I'm going to put the node reaction like 40, which is a lot. So I have a rule. If whenever I put the sharpening, the, the noise at 40, I take my sharpening and I take minus whatever I put in the noise. So it's going to be 60 for the sharpening, right? And the masking, very important, especially when you have a very noisy photo. Because you see, uh, when you sharpen a photo, you bring back some noise. So I'm going to press the Alt key and move my masking until the sky is totally black. And voila. Okay, now it's kind of blurry in the back, which is cool because it gives dimension. I love this photo. It's really one of my favorite photo. And uh, yeah, it just reminds me of this movie Ratatouille from Pixar. Uh, let me show you the before and after. That's the before. That's the after. Before, after, before, after. I love doing that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so a lot of little techniques on how to shoot in the night, you know, when you tripod and not allowed, and how to give depth and atmosphere to your photo hope you like that and let's get back to my room all right guys i hope this inspired you to take your camera and go out on the roof without a tripod because you can still get some good shot you just have to try this uh, timer technique uh, with a sort of not too high iso and yeah it's just a little uh, you know trial and error process anyways Please leave me a comment to tell me what you think of this episode or if there are any other subjects you would like me to do a tutorial on. It helps me grow. Thank you very much for your interest, for your mails and your support. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.